Well, uh, we're 19 days out from the election. I don't know that we are 19 days out from finding out who wins the election. That could be a much longer process. But um, I think if you want to look for polls that say your person is going to win, and I think just about everybody listening to this program uh, wants Harris to win, or at the very least, Trump to lose, um, you can find those polls. If you want indications as to how they are campaigning now, that they feel they're in trouble, you can also find those. Harris was on Charlemagne the God, uh, the God, the God. Uh, the God's fun. In the uh, uh, program, the Breakfast Morning. Uh, what is it? Uh, Breakfast Club. Yep. And um, some have taken that as an indication that they're worried about uh, uh, black voters, particularly black uh, men voters. And we heard Obama the other day you know, chastise them in, in a way that only Obama feels like he has a license to do um, his respectability politics. It brought back some actually not some great memories uh, for me. <laughs> Nevertheless, um, so you could make that as an indication, you know, Harris is going on, I think, uh, Fox News today. So if you want to see indication, people are interpreting that as like maybe uh, they're they're worried. Uh, who knows? I mean, Hillary went on the Breakfast Club. That's where she pulled the uh, hot sauce out of her purse. But, but she went on the Breakfast Club in April. Oh, the primary. I see. Yeah. She went in the primary. Um, here is Sean Hannity. And um, this is like what's interesting is his audience is not watching um, the Bloomberg, uh, uh, you know, the Bloomberg presentation of the Economic Club of Chicago, right? Like, I just don't think that they're like looking this stuff up. And but Hannity is going to highlight this. And uh, here's how he introduces it. So in one of his greatest all time moments on the campaign trail, former President Donald Trump absolutely schooled Bloomberg's editor in chief today during a live appearance at the Economic Club of Chicago. Despite things getting well, a little heated at times, Trump, frankly, masterfully navigated the situation, laid out what was a clear vision for American prosperity. Let's take a look. OK, now uh, this is a uh, he plays a tiny clip. I want to play one or two other clips. To just give you a sense, like, if he's got to play this, if he's playing this, he's doing it because he's afraid that the other people are going to see other clips. Uh, because, I mean, this is just uh, bat crap crazy. He, he I mean, uh, Trump, you know, and I, uh, I, I understand that politicians speak out of their arse quite a bit, but uh, this, I thought, was pretty impressive. Well, the U.S. Justice Department is thinking about breaking up Alphabet, as Google likes to be known now. Should Google be broken up? I just haven't gotten over something the Justice Department did yesterday, where Virginia cleaned up its voter rolls and got rid of thousands and thousands of bad votes, and the Justice Department sued them that they should be allowed to put those bad votes and illegal votes back in and let the people vote. So I haven't, I, I haven't gotten, I haven't gotten over that. A lot of people have seen that they can't even believe okay, it. The question is about Google, <laughs> President Trump. Yeah, look, Google's got a lot of power. They're very bad to me, very, very bad to me. I mean, I, I, I can speak from that standpoint. Uh, they only have bad stories. In other words, if I have 20 good stories and 20 bad stories, and everyone's entitled to that, you'll only see the 20 bad stories. And I called the head of Google the other day, and I said, I'm getting a lot of good stories lately, but you don't find them in Google. I think it's a whole rigged deal. I think Google's rigged just like our government is rigged all so over you the would, place. So you would break them up, in other words? I'd do something, but you have to have... <laughs> <laughs> I can speak from the standpoint of what they've done to me personally. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, this is a big deal. Um, it's a big deal what we're doing with Google. And um, 
and it's a big uh, you know it, it it seems like it's a big uh, issue and you're going in to talk to uh, the Bloomberg news I mean you would imagine that maybe this might come up but he doesn't seem to like I don't need to prepare for anything that's all I need to you do. need to prepare you need to prepare <laughs> Google well I mean, on it, like this is like I feel like I could ask my 11-year-old son, like, "What should we do with Google?" And he'd be like, "Google's dumb." <laughs> do you want to at least hint that you're aware of the broader concerns about Google, as opposed to like how many, you know, Trump did something good stories end up on the front page? <laughs> <laughs> amazing! It's amazing, and that's only after he has to be like. Hey, wait a second. Why are you bringing up what the... Uh, I mean, the Justice Department, I'm just so now, upset about the DOJ. The only thing I could say about the, his, you know, like immediately avoiding the question of the DOJ is that he wants to bring it back to the voting because they are really, really trying to set up the pins, essentially, for uh, claiming that the election has been stolen. And so, you know, I... I there could be some method to his madness. He he clearly doesn't have any awareness of this case whatsoever. Uh, but it's reminiscent of Ted Cruz last night with Colin Allred. Every answer he tied back to the invasion of illegals. Coming. Yeah. Remember Trump's 2020 election interference case? He pled not guilty, but only after making it clear that he, quote, had every right to do so. Ground News found 90 sources covering this with significantly less reporting from the right. Going through these articles, you can see there's no mention from conservative outlets of what looks like Trump's confession. Now, the left points this could be the very thing that helps Jack Smith finally convict him. This type of selective reporting is the exact problem we've been talking about with today's news. Rather than adding clarity to an already confusing election season and political landscape, the news can easily contribute to it. That's why we're longtime partners of Ground News. Their platform is designed for people who want to go beyond the headlines to deeply understand today's current events from every perspective. And with Trump and Harris often at the center of very selective reporting, I highly recommend following uh, the news on the debate and the rest of their campaign here so you can avoid being manipulated by the news you see and the news you don't. I think their mission directly aligns with what we try and do here on our show. Plus, they're independent and subscriber funded. But my viewers get 40% off their top tier vantage plan. Go on to ground.news slash majority or scan my QR code to compare coverage with context you can't find anywhere else. Hey, folks, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show. We do it every day at 12 p.m. Eastern for about two and a half hours. We even take phone calls. You should check that out.